Hi, welcome back. I'm Nick Pierce. And if this was a cooking show, I would not be waiting for a pizza right now, nor would I be starving. But it's not. This is the business of arts, music, and entertainment, and this is episode eight, your bands, finances, and paperwork. Not just for your band, though. Um, whatever your project you're doing, um, your band is a business, so is your film or your movie or your videos or production company or whatever it is you have. And uh, so let's take a look at what you need to do to keep all your paperwork and finances organized. First, like I said before, you want to designate the principal location for your business. If you have a home that you have a studio in or you rent a rehearsal space, um, like a location to practice in, or if someone in your band has a good set of business brains, due to their experience, you may want to use that as the location. The next part is you want to register your name with the Secretary of State and get your employee identification number, or EIN. That establishes you as a business entity. The next part is get a P.O. box, get a post office box. This way you don't have to give out your own personal address to everybody in the world because there's a lot of crazies out there. Next, open up an account somewhere with a financial institution. Open up both a checking account and a savings account. When you open up a checking account, look for a small business checking. Most of the time you can avoid any monthly fees with a free business checking account. Most places, financial institutions offer that. And as long as you keep a small monthly balance in there, you'll be able to avoid any. When you open up your band bank account, you want to set it up as a dual signature account. Most places do this still. It helps control how the money is spent in as, as far as writing checks and making withdrawals. But another way to control your spending is when you open up that checking account, they're going to give you a debit card. And that's a very handy thing to have because sometimes online you may want to make some purchases and you will need that. However, in order to control the spending, try this. Write your credit, the, the, the debit card number down along with your expiration date, the name on the card as it appears, and the little three-digit security number on the back. Write it down in a safe place with your bank account information. Take that debit card that they give you, put it in a plastic bag, fill it with water, and put it in your freezer. This way, no one can run around using the debit card. However, when you need to make those critical purchases online, you have one. Or you need to make a hotel reservation, or rent a car, or a truck to move equipment around in, you have a credit card to use to make that reservation. And then you know that you would need to uh, use that card to actually pick that up or check into that hotel or if you need to go on the road. But then just leave the bag out for a couple days. Now, keep records. Part of your finance and paperwork is all about keeping records. And you're going to have a lot of records to keep. From contracts to business filings to your bank account, property. Um, and assets, including copyrights, publishing registration, equipment purchases uh, by the band, uh, any income you have, any expenses, and any payouts to members or employees that you hire. Now, I'd like to share with you a way to organize all this and stay on track and you're going to need a few things to do this. First of all, I would recommend start off with about a dozen, one dozen file folders. And you also want a box or a container or in some cases just a little pocket folder to keep everything in. Try something like that. Maybe you'll need a whole file cabinet, and a whole office eventually which is great because the more space you need, the bigger your project is. And that's great because when your project grows, you're making money and you're doing this right. And then any type of accounting software or even a ledger. And I'm going to touch base on accounting software that you can put on your computer. 
And if you're keeping track of all your business paperwork on your computer, you also may want a little thumb drive. And I keep one on my computer, and I have one for each project that I take on. This one, for example, is for the program you're listening to right now. I have another thumb drive for my band. I have another thumb drive for a other business project that I'm working on. And all my information is kept on this. Any file I have this way for that project, when I need to go somewhere, I have all the information I need, and I can put it into anybody's computer and retrieve anything when I need it. If you don't want to do the computer thing, you can get what's called a ledger, and most office supply stores have one. And it's a simple way of keeping track of each month or by week. When you get to the meat and potatoes of this, it has a simple spot for what you brought in and what's going out. Now, as far as income, bands have many sources of it. For example, live shows, royalties for music played in the public, album and song sales, whether it's CDs or downloads from online, also merchandise such as t-shirts, hats, um, inflatable dolls with your band name on it, ads on your website if you have one, and sales of equipment and copyright. However, of course, with your income also comes expenses such as recording costs, rehearsal studio costs, road and, and touring expenses, Maybe if you have a trailer um, or van or truck you bought with the band money, um, you, you may need to make payments on it. You have insurance, registration. In some states you even have admissions and inspections that need to go along with that, as well as insuring your equipment. So you have equipment insurance, even uh, copyright registration. If you write new music, put out a new album, you're going to have to register that. That's a band expense. Uh, union dues, if any. Another thing is your website, your registration for your domain name, your your hosting service to to keep it up online for people to see and maintain it, as well as any marketing, advertising, promotion, and any production and manufacturing of your merchandise, such as CDs, videos, and artwork, posters, and the list goes on. Keep track of all this, like I said, a ledger is a good way, and software is probably the best way. And you have a lot to choose from. Um, you want to make sure it simply tracks expenses and your income. You can go to a store and buy software, but check this out, free. And free is what it's all about. If you're familiar with Windows and Microsoft and Office, Excel is a spreadsheet program, and Microsoft has templates that you can download to, to use with Microsoft Excel. If you're a computer-savvy computer, computer savvy person, you can create your own way of tracking if you're familiar with how to design a spreadsheet and find something that's more conducive and more personalized for your use, but you can get free templates. You can also try a free accounting software program and uh, one in particular that I was playing with lately that someone recommended to me was found on www.gnucash.org. The software is free. You want to stay away from sites that give you a free trial and then charge you for it later on because most likely in the middle of using it, you may not want to spend the money and you may just lose whatever you already entered because sometimes their file extensions aren't compatible with something you may be switching over to and it's kind of proprietary. So stay away from some of that. When it comes to organizing your records, the 12 folders I was talking about are broken down as follows. You want something for your expenses and in this case I always use this folder because it fits in the pocket folder that I showed you earlier with all the other folders in it. And these are just receipts and all that. The other thing you want to look at is a folder for your band bank account. So there is one folder dedicated just to your bank account where you write down your debit card number, any PIN information, 
I even have the, the, the account thing and a copy of the voided check from when we opened up the account and any fine mice print that they enclose with that. And each month they may send you a statement, so you want to include that in there. Next, you may want to look at a folder of just your band's paperwork, such as your BPA, your, your partnership agreement, any registration that you have with the state, such as um, your name registration, trademarks that you filed, service marks that you filed. Um, and you also want to include in that folder what's called the important information sheet. Now, the important information sheet has every website that we have with our usernames and passwords on um, that we use, our sign-ins, so our username, our password, and all that are on here. This way, everybody can get into every site, and that's part of the important information that goes in your business registration and filing. Moving on, we have another folder of just our copyright certificates. Copyright certificates, once you register your work with the Library of Congress, you're issued a certificate. And it looks just like the application you filled out or similar to it, but it's in color and it has a barcode stamp and registration number. You will also want a folder for all of your contracts signed. The folder with all your contracts for shows and venues that you are going to play or that you have played. Keep the originals on file, take a copy with you to the show, and you may need that just in case there's a dispute. The next folder you may want is a folder with your stage setup and show equipment, any technical requirements you have, such as a list of any equipment that you need, floor plans, and it's a simple, and I shrunk everything down to eight and a half by learning to keep in here, and I also have a master set of blueprints as well, um, lighting rigs, channel uh, queuing information, sound, and all that, a list of different equipment pieces that we require, and what scenic elements we have involved, anything like that. The next thing is invoices due or bills to pay. Then you need a folder for rental and lease agreements. And your rental and lease agreements are your, if you rent any space for recording studios, then you need to put all your financial reports in a folder as well. It just simply states what our expenses are, how much we bring in each month, and then you need something with all your tax returns in it. Now, all your tax returns, I like to use another one of those folders with a side to it instead of an opening folder. And I can break it down by year. 2007, 2008, 2009, all nice and organized. Now, the next folder is for anything else of importance. Or, hey, once in a while you just got to have some fun, so be creative. If you want to have a band gathering to make folder origami, feel free. But that's my 12-folder rule as far as keeping everything organized. Keep everything in a safe place and easily accessible. The one involved in keeping track of all this is going to be in charge of that. And just keep up on what's called the books. And that, in a nutshell, is probably the best way to organize your band. Now, I have tips on my website and different links for helpful websites that you can find on my website. And my website, again, is www.sites.google.com slash site slash Nick Pierce Show. And I hope that my 20 years of experience in the music and entertainment industry has helped you. If you have any questions, again, please email me, thenickpierceshow at gmail.com. Again, I'm Nick Pierce. Thanks for joining me.